So how is what you do like or unlike what you originally thought that you'd be doing? Yeah, so as an engineer, um, you know, engineers are problem solvers. So when I uh, went through high school and college, uh, I knew that I would be solving problems. Uh, what I, and, and engineering has met that expectation for sure. Uh, what I didn't realize is that um, I solve problems with big teams, with small teams, so a lot of working with others. Um, you know, engineering, you think, get on my computer, you know, uh, either type some things in and do some modeling and simulation, uh, but it's much more than that. Um, and so it was, it was, I get to work with people every single day, um, really smart people. Um, a lot of them are typically men. Uh, uh, so that, that, that was a little different than I had anticipated. Um, but what the really fun part of every day that I get to do, I get to build real things, uh, actually solve really hard national security problems since I work at Sandia Labs. We solve, we solve really hard uh, problems and uh, we get to fly things, we get to blow things up, we get to uh, fly things into space and watch them uh, function. And then, um, so yeah, and, 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 and meeting the mission needs and the things that we can do with engineering and solve these national security problems has been uh, quite gratifying. Another element uh, for me in particular is really being a leader uh, at, at the labs, um, as, especially as a female. Uh, I tend to be a leader of uh, pretty much male-dominated teams, um, but I have a blast doing it. It's so much fun. Um, I'm excited to go to work uh, pretty much every day. That's awesome. Um, but just to kind of turn the tables a little bit, can you tell me about a time when you were really challenged um, and what you did to overcome it? Yeah, so um, so of course, again, we're engineers problem solvers, right? There's lots of technical problems uh, that we encounter every single day. Uh, but I think technical problems, for the most part, are solvable. Um, even if it's not the solution that you go on you know, initially, uh, they're solvable. I think the more, the, the more challenging element of my job is sometimes getting people to buy into a particular solution uh, or, um, yeah, ba basically getting them on a path. If, if, uh, in one instance, I had a vision of how we should do things. Uh, I felt really strongly about the vision in that, in that scenario. I was a leader. I was a leader of an organization and felt like we needed to change the way we had done things before. Um, uh, the landscape had changed for us, you know, it sort of, you know, years had evolved, and so I felt like we really needed to change things. Well, it's really hard to get people to buy into your vision and how you change things and believe that that is the right path. Uh, so I had lots of meetings, lots of presentations, got stakeholders on board, got funding to, for, for the vision that I had, um, found a champion, somebody who believed uh, what I did. Uh, who actually went off and actually just started doing it. Um, and that, his buying into my idea uh, uh, eventually propagated the organization. Um, so it's sort of finding somebody who, who championed the idea to actually go and do the work and show people that it was actually the right path forward. Uh, so the challenge is, again, technical problems uh, are, are always challenging. But this, th for me, the challenge was really getting people to buy into that idea. You know, required skills that I didn't necessarily learn in engineering school, right? Uh, marketing, uh, you know, communication, uh, a lot of those other elements that in order f to, to, to convince everyone that this is the right direction, I sort of had to pull out these other tools that I perhaps didn't learn in engineering school. Yeah, you mentioned that um, the work environment is pretty heavily male dominated, did that factor in at all with the process of trying to recommend your idea? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I typically uh, will just, you know, I believe something, I believe something really strongly. Um, I'm certain it did uh, because I have a different style than my male counterparts. Uh, I, I, I just approach things differently. And actually that's all individuals, right? We all, we're all individuals, we, we approach things differently. Um, but I don't know that it, I don't know that because I was a female that it was any more challenging for them to buy into the idea. They really, the, the, sometimes the culture, again, change is hard, right? In whatever environment you're in, um, change is difficult. Um, I actually think perhaps being a female actually helped me. <laughs> um, I will tell you that I go to meetings sometimes and, you know, uh, you know, I'm one or two, maybe three, uh, you know, females in this really large room of, of males. And, uh, 
it's, it's very easy for a male uh, counterpart of mine to know exactly who I am uh, because I'm so different, right? So it's very easy to pick me out in a crowd uh, versus uh, them, you know, me trying to make a connection with, you know, uh, 90 males when there's only three females. So again, it's a little, there's some challenges being a female in that environment. And for the males, it's actually pretty easy. <laughs> to, oh yeah, that was, you know, Rita, that was who she was. And, and they're, it's pretty easy for them to pick me out because again, I, I stand out, I'm, I'm definitely different. Yeah. Um, so what has been your funniest on the job mishap? I feel like in engineering there could really be a lot of ways this could go. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, this one was, uh, it, it's interesting, being in, a, being in the environment I'm in, right, Sandia National Laboratory is a, a, a national security laboratory, uh, mishaps for us are really not a good day, <laughs> right? Uh, um, and so really some of my most fun or mishap events have really been uh, doing things with my colleagues uh, unexpected events that we've had to adapt to, uh, unex un unexpected, um, you know, luckily, you know, as engineers, uh, 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 again, our goal is to, to make things, do things really well, uh, make sure that they don't break, make sure that they work as we intend them to, to, to work. Um, and then again, sometimes there's really high consequences if they don't. So, so we try to not have mishaps on kind of our engineering piece. Uh, but uh, gosh, I have I have uh, travel stories that, that that have happened. In fact, um, one uh, one trip that I took with several colleagues, we were off at a at a conference, uh, making our way back, and we had a flight from Denver to Albuquerque. You know, easy thirty um, you know sixty minute flight. Uh, you know, plane. Uh, you know, we all loaded up. Plane landed in Denver. All loaded up. Got in. Come into Albuquerque. Uh, we passed over Santa Fe. I remember looking out the window. And there was some weather here in uh, Albuquerque, so they, they, you know, we circled around up, up, up top. Um, we weren't, uh, we were starting to run out of fuel, so they said, you know, we're going to divert you. Uh, so they actually uh, diverted us to a to a northern, a small town in northern New Mexico, uh, where I think the runway was probably just barely long <laughs> enough for us to land at 7:37. So we land there. Um, you know, they tell us we're just going to get some fuel, wait for the weather to, to pass in Albuquerque. Um, you know, it was kind of evening, it was already dusk. And, uh, you know, we're all, they let us walk around the airplane. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're in that process and looking at, um, you know, talking to, talking to each other. I, most of the plane was, our, was folks that I worked with, a lot of coworkers on it. Um, and, you know, fuel truck drives up, you know, they have their flashlights out you know, reading instructions on how to actually fuel up a 737, um, you know, had to call all kinds of folks. It was kind of like we figured we were going to be on the front page of, of this little town, their newspaper the next day because they just, you know, this big 737 landed in their small town. Uh, but yeah, those kinds of things just, you know, got fueled up, you know, back the plane all the way up to the edge of the runway and took off and everything was fine. We got to Albuquerque just fine. Um, but you know those kinds of events and those kinds of challenges that you have, um, you know, resiliency is really you know we could have all gone stressed out. You know we're not getting home on time. We've had a long day, uh, those kinds of things. But really we made the most of it. We had fun with it. It actually bonded us <laughs> as a team. Uh, you know we can still talk about that today and, and laugh about that particular situation. But those are the kinds of uh, I, I would say the the mishaps are really kind of the fun that I have with the team um, when when we're off doing things. On, on various activities. Yeah, almost like a little adventure. It is, yeah, we get to have lots of adventures. And, and, <laughs> and I've gotten to travel, you know, effectively the globe with, with, uh, with my job, uh, you know, doing things with, with various uh, uh, partners across the, across, the wor across the world. So uh, that's been really neat. Was that ever something that you expected that you'd be traveling so much as an engineer? I didn't. Um, I had no idea that's what I would be doing. Um, I'm always for it. I'm always an adventurer, so I like I like I like going out and going to new places, uh, exploring new things. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know that I would get to experience uh, kind of that type of that type of world. So it's been been really fun. So. What advice would you give to someone starting out in your field? Yeah, so there's kind of, I look at this in kind of two phases, right? What you should do before you even, you know, kind of if you're in middle school or in high school, 
uh, in college? Uh, what kinds of things should you engage in? And then kind of, so I'll break it up into kind of two pieces, I guess. Um, so the first is, is, is obviously for my, for engineering, you know, math and science, uh, uh, if you love those two subjects, you will absolutely love engineering. Um, and, and because every day you're gonna get to do some piece of that uh, solution space. But I think especially in particular for, for, for women or females, um, what I really encourage them to do is take on leadership opportunities, whether that's through sports, whether it's through music, whether it's through dance, or whether it's through some other passion that they might have. Uh, because I think for me in particular, leadership skills um, in engineering have been extremely valuable. Um, so I really emphasize uh, doing those leadership skills. Uh, learning how to communicate um, is, is really important. Uh, again, so that you can communicate your ideas. This challenge that I had with selling my vision, right? That was about, it wasn't about the technical, it was a little bit about the technical vision, but had I not been able to communicate and sell that and you know, use those other skills, uh, that would have never gone forth even though it was a good idea. Um, and then finally, kind of uh, pre is uh, learning to work in teams. Um, again, as an engineer, you think, wow, this is pretty brainy. You get to you know, sit down at your computer, uh, but really that's only a small part of the job. Working with people, solving problems together is critically important. So those are kind of the pre, you know, things that you should just think about. And I actually think those are applicable to pretty much any job that, that somebody might, might take on. Um, when you start as an engineer or any, you know, again, any new job, um, you know, finding a mentor is really important. Somebody who you can trust, somebody who you can uh, engage with, somebody who can ask questions that maybe you're not comfortable in asking in a big audience. Um, so finding that mentor or that, that person who can help you develop, I think is critically important. Um, again, finding teammates, uh, folks that you, that you work well with to solve problems. Uh, brainstorming with folks. Uh, I think those are all really key elements. Uh, communication will always be uh, 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 you know, an issue. Uh, but I think my most important uh, aspect is really be brave. Don't be afraid to ask questions uh, and be yourself. Because I think the value and the difference that we can bring into STEM fields in particular um, is really valuable. Uh, so I would say be brave and, and be yourself.